Prada has often shown to be a powerful influence in the fashion business. Prada has been designing and selling wonderfully produced and inventive handbags, garments, shoes, and accessories for women, men, and even children for over 100 years. Prada is now synonymous with premium products and never fails to disappoint year after year. But, how did a company that practically went bankrupt grow into what it is today? The Origin of Prada the company was founded in Milan in 1913 by Mario and Martino Prada as a luxury leather goods firm. The brothers opened their leather shop in Galleria Vittorio, one of Milan's main shopping, where they sold various leather goods, ranging from bags to shoes. However, the pair made little impact on the world of fashion. Things began to look good for the company when in 1919, Prada was granted the special honor of supplying the Italian royal house due to the quality of their products, a significant achievement for such a young company. Mario decided to incorporate the House of Savoy's coat of arms and knotted rope design of the Royal House of Italy into its trademark logo. Quite ironically, Maria Prada didn't believe that women had a say outside the household, so none of his female relatives were employed by the company. Even more ironic was that his only son had no intention of taking over the company. However, following the death of Mario Prada, one of his daughters, Luisa Prada, took over the business. Luisa Prada ran the company for almost 20 years. However, the company shrunk under her leadership, and by 1978, there was only one store left. Following Luisa's disastrous reign as Prada CEO, she handed over the reins of power to another unlikely person, her daughter Maiaccia Prada Maiaccia was born Maria Bianchi Prada on May 10, 1949, in Milan, Italy. She was the youngest granddaughter of Mario Prada. Maiaccia Prada was an unusual heir to her family's company. Prada, a former member of the Italian Communist Party, attended the University of Milan, where she became known as an outspoken feminist and obtained a PhD in political science. She was always seen distributing communist flyers at rallies on a regular basis. Following her studies, Prada went to Milan's Piccolo Teatro and studied as a mime for five years. Prada joined her family's firm in 1978 and quickly got to work redesigning a corporation that had grown dull and sluggish. At the time she took over the company, the company's annual revenue stood at $450,000. Her first big hit was a black nylon bag with a silver triangle label. Her shoe and handbag designs quickly became the center of a fashion cult in Europe, America, and Japan. Much of what distinguished Maiaccia Prada from the rest of the fashion world is her seeming disregard for the fashion industry. Maiaccia has always forged her own path and shown courage in experimenting with new designs. Her research previously featured a raincoat that was transparent until wet, at which time it became opaque. At a display in 2004, she charmed the front row of critics with a range of tourist outfits that featured straw hats and embroidered moccasins. In the hands of another designer, the pieces may have been considered gaudy, in Prada's hands, they were stylish. With the help of Patrizio Bertelli, Prada began updating the company's merchandise with designs she developed herself. Bertelli had a side business selling leather goods. He had a sharp business mind and quickly rose to the position of business manager of the company while Maiaccia provided creative leadership. Eventually, Bertelli and Maiaccia got engaged. This partnership began to move the company, which was once on the verge of closing up, to greater heights. Maiaccia Prada and her husband and business partner, Patrizio Bertelli, kept a tight grip on the company. The organization expanded their product line by adding footwear. For years later, Maiaccia Prada, who has no formal fashion training, introduced a line of ready-to-wear women's clothes that she called uniforms for the slightly disenfranchised. It was a huge success. Dana handbags were also debuted by Prada in 1985, and these bags proved to be a commercial success. They introduced a ready-to-wear brand in 1989 and the younger, somewhat less costly Mio Mio line in 1992, followed by Prada Sport, whose signature red line is almost as well-known as Nike's swoosh emblem in certain circles. A series of stores and boutiques developed in conjunction with architect Rum Koolhaas in Paris, New York, and San Francisco became instantly famous. In 1992, Maiaccia Prada and her husband founded the Prada Foundation, a non-profit organization committed to the assistance of diverse upcoming modern designers. The company then decided to get rid of middlemen wholesalers and deal directly with their customers, 
a move that actually paid off quite well. As a result of this move, the company needed to expand its physical location, and soon began opening new signature stores and boutiques in Milan, as well as other major cities around the world, including New York, Madrid, London, Paris and Tokyo in 1994. These new stores and boutiques had a distinctive design and were painted in a distinctive shade of green, which the company called Prada Green. The stores later earned the nickname Green Stores because of their distinctive green color. In 1995, the company received international acclaim when Hollywood actress Uma Thurman wore one of her gowns to the Academy Awards ceremony, establishing the company as an international status. By 1997, the company's revenue had increased to $674 million, and Prada embarked on an ambitious acquisition strategy. Over the next two years, the company began purchasing shares in competing fashion houses such as Gucci and Fendi, and other companies and forming a partnership with Azadine Alaya in 2000. Over the next few years, the company's revenue had risen to $1 billion. Unfortunately, the acquisitions were extremely expensive and Prada suffered a significant debt as a result of this. In 2001, having been put under pressure by his bankers, Bertelli sold all of Prada's 25.5% share in Fendi to LVMH and the sale raised only 295 million US dollars, a sum which was still not enough to save the company. As a result, the Helmut Lang, Amy Faircloth, Guy, and Jill Sander labels were sold five years after. Prada was also supposed to go public on September 8, 2001, but as a result of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, this plan was postponed indefinitely. In 2003, the company made $1.4 billion US and sales profits increased by 33% and $38 billion US dollars that year. However, Prada and its competitors had to contend with counterfeit Chinese products. This forced some of these companies to move their production sites to China. Nevertheless, Prada remained unfazed and kept all of its shoes, belts and bags of clothes, other things manufactured in Italy. As if the drop in sales was not enough downtrend, the Prada Spring Summer 2009 Ready to Wear Fashion Show, held on September 23, 2008 in Milan, received disreputable publicity because all of the models on the catwalk were wobbling. In fact, two of the models fell down in front of the photographers and had to be assisted up by people who had come to enjoy a runway show. Funnily, the models took off their shoes to complete their walk. Another model had to stop and turn back during the finale walk because she couldn't walk in her high heels any longer. However, Maechia claimed that the height of the heels wasn't the problem, but the silk socks that were used. She claimed that the socks were slippery and moved inside of the shoes, preventing the model's feet from having a correct grip on the sole. Nevertheless, Maechia Prada promised that the shoes offered in stores will have a lower heel and that the little socks would be sewed into the shoes to avoid further slips. However, many fashion experts did predict that once the socks were stitched into the shoes, they would be non-washable and would rapidly stink and turn gray. As a result, the shoes were never commercially available. That same year, the company launched a duplex megastore in Kuala Lumpur at the pavilion Kuala Lumpur. In July 2016, product clothing became available to purchase online for the first time through Netta Porter and Mitharisa. The company then proceeded to launch some classic product lines that had previously been commercially successful. It brought back the iconic nylon handbag from the 1980s. This was a genius. As a result, in 2018, annual revenue increased to $3.1 billion, resuming the company into a positive trend for the financial year. On December 31, 2019, the company reported a revenue of $3.22 billion, representing a 2.7% increase from the previous year. That same year, Prada stated that fur would be removed from the collection and all house brands by 2020, stating that focusing on novel materials will allow the firm to explore new frontiers of creative design while addressing the need for ethical products. In August of that year, the fashion house announced it would no longer use kangaroo leather in its products. In February 2020, Maechia Prada and Patrizio Bertelli named the Belgian designer Raf Simons as co-creative director. Prior to the partnership with Prada, Raf Simons had worked with other fashion houses like Christian Dior, Calvin Klein, and Jill Sander. This partnership is a confirmation that Prada aims at maintaining a balance of innovation and creativity, while not setting aside the brand's ethics. Maechia Prada's uniqueness and intellectual purity attract to intellectuals and artists, while fashion editors are captivated to her continual experimentalism. In 2003 and 2004, Prada delivered extremely impressive collections that reaffirmed both her own aesthetic sensibility and the grandeur of her brand.
Prada's net worth. According to data provided by Edwired, the Italian luxury brand Prada was valued at $11.1 billion on January 1, 2022. Prada's global sales reached $6.4 billion in 2020. Expansion Plans the brand has also managed to keep its independence by avoiding purchase by multinational luxury corporations such as Louis Vuitton. The owners have said that they have no intentions to sell and the company will continue to be a family business. As part of its long-term expansion strategy, the firm intends to penetrate the African market and, like many other companies, it is paying particular attention to the demands and tastes of young people. The ability to blend creative energy with customer requirements remains a fundamental capability. As a result, the company has been able to adjust rapidly to changing consumer requirements, while being one of the most sought-after brands in the fashion business. Product clothing and accessories have been described as traditional and unconventional, frumpy but edgy, and characterized by an ambiguous techno-retro aesthetic. Prada style is contemporary, drawing on northern Italian traditions of understated elegance and superb craftsmanship. Maecia Prada thinks otherwise. In 1995, I make ugly clothes from ugly material, simply bad taste, but they end up looking good anyway. She might have been talking to that season's poor taste collection, which included trends like a Formica check design that resembled 1970s polyester. Several years later she said, I have always thought that Prada clothes looked kind of normal, but not quite normal. Maybe they have little twists that are disturbing, or something about them that's not quite acceptable. Prada is not clothing for the bourgeoisie. Whatever angle we choose to look at it, the story of this fashion house is one to be admired. The company went from near bankruptcy to one of the most sought-after fashion brands in the world because of one woman who chose to blend her ethical dispositions with creativity and innovation. Today, many celebrities have shown an interest in the classic Prada handbag, and they appear to be obsessed with the brand's other products. In the fashion world, Prada items are stand out and are of great quality, making them celebrities' favorites. Prada has now become a household name. They have profoundly impacted the core of the fashion industry. Which part of this story fascinates you? For more information like this, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification button.